the sheer awful audacity of what Sadius had done twisted at Kaladin's insides. He thought what had been done to him had been horrible, but here Sadius callously condemned thousands of men, light-eyed and dark, supposed allies. That betrayal seemed to weigh as heavy on Kaladin as the bridge itself. It pressed on him, made him gasp for breath. Is there no hope for men? They kill those they should love. What good is it to fight? What good is it to win? If there is no difference between ally and enemy? What is victory? Meaningless. What does the deaths of my friends and colleagues mean? Nothing. The entire world was a pustule, sickeningly green and infested with corruption. Numb, Kaladin and the others reached the chasm, though they were too late to help with the transfer. The men he'd sent ahead were there, Teft looking grim, Scar leaning on a spear to support his wounded leg. A small group of dead spearmen lay nearby. Sadius's soldiers retrieved their wounded when possible, but some died as they were helped along. They'd abandoned some of those here. Sadius was obviously in a hurry to leave the scene. The dead had been left with their equipment. Scar had probably gotten his crutch there. Some poor bridge crew would have to cross all the way back here at a later date to salvage from these and from Dalinar's fallen. They set their bridge down and Kaladin wiped his brow. Don't place the bridge across the chasm. We'll wait until the last of the soldiers have crossed, then carry it over on one of the other bridges. Matal eyed Kaladin and his team, but didn't order them to set their bridge. He realized that by the time they got it into position, they'd have to pull it up again. Isn't that a sight? Kaladin turned. The tower rose behind them, sloped in their direction. Kalin's army was a circle of blue, trapped in the middle of the slope after trying to push down and get to Sadius before he left. The Parshendi were a dark swarm with specks of red from their marbled skins. They pressed at the Alethi ring, compressing it. Such a shame. Makes me sick. Other bridgemen nodded, and Kaladin was surprised to see the concern on their faces. Rock and Teft joined Kaladin and Moash, all wearing their Parshendi carapace armor. He was glad they'd left Shen back in the camp. He'd have been catatonic at the sight of it all. Teft cradled his wounded arm. Rock raised a hand to shade his eyes and shook his head, looking eastward. <sighs> He's a shame. A shame to Sadius. A shame to us. Bridge four, come on! Matal was waving for them to cross Bridge Six's bridge and leave the staging plateau. An idea came to Kaladin suddenly. A fantastic idea, like a blooming rock bud in his mind. We'll follow with our own bridge, Matal. We only just got to the chasm. We need to sit for a few minutes. Cross now! We'll just fall further behind. You want to explain to Sadius why he has to hold the entire army for one miserable bridge crew? We've got our bridge. Let my men rest. We'll catch up to you later. And if those savages come after you? Kaladin shrugged. Matal blinked, then seemed to realize how badly he wanted that to happen. Shoot yourself! Matal rushed across bridge six as the other bridges were pulled up. In seconds, Kaladin's team was alone beside the chasm the army retreating westward. Kaladin smiled broadly. I can't believe it. After all that worrying. Men! We're free! The others turned to him confused. We'll follow in a short while, and Matal will assume we're coming. We fall farther and farther behind the army, until we're out of sight. Then we'll turn north and use the bridge to cross the plains. We can escape northward, and everyone will just assume the Parshendi caught us and slaughtered us. The other bridgemen regarded him with wide eyes. Supplies. We have these spheres. Kaladin pulled out his pouch. A wealth of them right here. We can take the armor and weapons from the dead over there and use those to defend ourselves from bandits. It will be hard, but we won't be chased. The men were starting to grow excited. However, something gave Kaladin pause. What of the wounded bridgemen back in the camp? I'll have to stay behind. What? Someone will need to. For the good of our wounded in camp. 
We can't abandon them, and if I stay behind, I can support the story. Wound me, and leave me on one of the plateaus. Sadius is sure to send scavengers back. I'll tell them my crew was hunted down in retribution for desecrating the Parshendi corpses, our bridge tossed into the chasm. They'll believe it. They've seen how the Parshendi hate us. The crew was all standing now, shooting glances at one another. Uncomfortable glances. We're not leaving without you. I'll follow, Sigzel. We can't leave those men behind. Keladin, lad. We can talk about me later. Maybe I'll go with you, then sneak back into camp later to rescue the wounded. For now, go salvage from those bodies. They hesitated. It's an order, men! They moved, offering no further complaint, rushing to pilfer from the corpses Sadius had abandoned. That left Kaladin alone beside the bridge. He was still unsettled. It isn't just the wounded back in camp. What is it? This was a fantastic opportunity. The type he'd have practically killed to get during his years as a slave. The chance to vanish. Presumed dead. The bridgemen won't have to fight. They're free. Why then was he so anxious? Kaladin turned to survey his men and was shocked to see someone standing beside him. A woman of translucent white light. It was Syl. As he'd never seen her before, the size of a regular person, hands clasped in front of her, hair and dress streaming to the side in the wind. He'd had no idea she could make herself so large. She stared eastward, her expression horrified, eyes wide and sorrowful. It was the face of a child watching a brutal murder that stole her innocence. Kaladin turned and slowly looked in the direction she was staring, toward the tower, toward Dalinar Colin's desperate army. The sight of them twisted his heart. They fought so hopelessly, surrounded, abandoned, left alone to die. We have a bridge. If we could get it set. Most of the Parshendi were focused on the Alethi army, with only a token reserve forced down at the base near the chasm. It was a small enough group that perhaps the bridgemen could contain them. No. That's idiocy. There are thousands of Prashendi soldiers blocking Kalen's path to the chasm. And how will we set the bridge with no archers to support us? Several of the bridgemen returned from their quick scavenge. Rock joined Kaladin, staring eastward, expression becoming grim. This thing is terrible. Can we not do something to help? It would be suicide, Rock. We'd have to run a full assault without an army to support us. Couldn't we just go back a little of the way? Wait to see if Colin can cut his way down to us? If he does, then we could set our bridge. No. If we stayed out of range, Colin would assume us to be scouts left by Sadius. We'll have to charge the chasm. Otherwise, he'd never come down to meet us. Besides, if we did somehow save some of those men, they'd talk. And Sadius would know we still live. He'd hunt us down and kill us. By going back, we'd throw away our chance at freedom. The other bridgemen nodded at that. The rest had gathered carrying weapons. It was time to go. Kaladin tried to squelch the feeling of despair inside him. Dalinar Kalin is probably just like the others. Like Rashun, like Sadius, like any number of light eyes. Pretending virtue, but corrupted inside. But he has thousands of dark-eyed soldiers with him. Men who don't deserve this terrible fate. Men like my old spear crew. We owe them nothing. Kaladin thought he could see Dalinar Kalin's banner flying blue at the front of his army. You got them into this, Kalin. I won't let my men die for you. He turned his back on the tower. Sil still stood beside him, facing eastward. It made his very soul twist in knots to see that look of despair on her face. Are Windspren attracted to wind, or do they make it? I don't know. Does it matter? Perhaps not. You see, I've remembered what kind of spren I am. Is this the time for it, Syl? I bind things, Kaladin. I am honor spren, spirit of oaths, of promises, and of nobility. Kaladin could faintly hear the sounds of the battle. Or was that just his mind, searching for something he knew to be there? Could he hear the men dying? Could he see the soldiers running away, scattering, leaving their warlord alone? Everyone else fleeing. Kaladin kneeling over Dalit's body, a green and burgundy banner flying alone on the field. I've been here before! 
Kaladin turned back toward that blue banner. Dalinar always fought at the front. What happened last time? I've learned. I won't be a fool again! It seemed to crush him. Sadius's betrayal, his exhaustion, the deaths of so many. He was there again for a moment, kneeling in Amaram's mobile headquarters, watching the last of his friends being slaughtered, too weak and hurt to save them. He raised a trembling hand to his head, feeling the brand there wet with his sweat. I owe you nothing, Kalin. Somebody has to start, son. Somebody has to step forward and do what is right because it is right. If nobody starts, then others cannot follow. Dalinar had come to help Kaladin's men, attacking those archers and saving Breach 4. The Light Eyes don't care about life, so I must, so we must, so you must. Life before death. I failed so often. I've been knocked to the ground and trod upon. Strength before weakness. This would be death I'd leave my friends to. Journey before destination. Death and what is right. We have to go back. Storm it. We have to go back. He turned to the members of Bridge Four. One by one, they nodded. Men who had been the dregs of the army just months before. Men who had once cared for nothing but their own skins, tossed away thoughts for their own safety, and nodded. They would follow him. Kaladin looked up. Bridge up! The members of Bridge 4 grabbed their bridge and hoisted it high. Stormlight rushed into Kaladin like a wave as if he'd put his lips up to a high storm and drawn it into himself. He pulled on a shield, grabbing the straps in his hand, then he turned, raising it high. He led his men in a charge back toward that abandoned blue banner. 